the uh, that was the commemoration of uh, Custer Battle. Well, or was it Custer Massacre? <laughs> Depending on what point of view you take. <laughs> So uh, Earl Biss painted this, I believe it was 1992, and he entitled it the, um, Custer's Last Stand. And so if you're eating, you're supposed to be Custer in the middle here, and uh, while all of this activity is going on around you. <laughs> he did get married eight times, which I uh, think proves him to be one of the most optimistic people in the world. I felt that uh, Earl and I had known each other before from the familiarity of his touch. I know I've lived in a previous lifetime. I, I, I feel that I've lived in many previous lifetimes and perhaps even future lifetimes. He lived in the 17th century and the 21st century. The guy could span that time zones. It was one of those things, he chased me until he got me. If Earl showed up, we always knew it wasn't gonna be a boring evening. He would manage to get trouble. Earl Biss, as a father, um, he wasn't Ward Cleaver. Part of my job was to keep it straight down the line. We did not get our deposits slipped back from that house because of bullet holes. I woke up on the wrong side of the law. So Earl uh, had the passion for life, um, the laughter, the champagne, a type of life. But his passion is, it was almost like you couldn't go a day without drawing or painting. He would be able to have a certain amount of peace for his, his, uh, his life. I would watch him literally in a blank canvas start at the top and in 45 minutes, there'd be a masterpiece. Really, it was just about him working. All he wanted to do was paint. He was a painter and he had large ideas. He was a conduit for the spirit, the emotion that the spirit world brought. And he always told me that he was the conduit to be able to convey that emotion and that light. He was always chasing the light. He's considered a master painter. He had knowledge and he knew what he was doing. He, he, he can work with his tools. Tools meaning the pigments, the oils, how he moves paint around on canvas. There's a knack, but it's training, it's experience. People don't realize that I've spent years and years in the studio, hours, thousands and thousands of hours in a studio all by myself. So uh, Earl's... Uh... Native American crow name that was the uh, spirit who walks among his people and I think that spoke precisely to where he was and what he did with his artwork. Yeah, and so well, like, uh, that, you know, that's why I respect that man. You know, he, you know, he's authentic. And it's too bad he's not here, because he uh, was a force in nature. He was one of the, the, he moved paint better than anybody, anybody ever did. And that's how he used to say uh, his style of painting was moving paint around. And uh, he taught me more than I ever, I ever thought I would ever learn about painting and art and uh, really contributed a lot to my life and to a lot of other people's lives. And his beauty and his art was just amazing. And he was my best friend.